Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, October, November 2022, paper 23. Let's start it. Question 1. Which gas diffuses the most slowly? We know that the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the molecular mass. The higher the molecular mass, the lower the rate of diffusion. So here I calculated the molecular mass for the four gases. As we can see, carbon dioxide has the highest molecular mass, so it will be the gas that diffuses most slowly, and the answer is B. Question 2. The chromatogram for four substances is shown. Which substance, which is the pure substance, and has the largest RF value? Pure substance, that, that means it has only one spot or one dye, and we will measure the RF value to know which is the largest. Here we have uh, two pure substances, A and C, and obviously, as we can see, uh, the spot C has a larger RF value than A, so the answer will be C. The structure of sodium chloride can be represented as shown. As we can see, there is uh, the ionic latus for sodium chloride. It is formed of alternating uh, regular arrangement of alternating positive and negative ions. So, what X and Y? What are X and Y? X is a positive ion and Y is a negative ion. This is the structure of the ionic crystal and the answer will be C. Question 4. Which two particles have the same electronic structure? Here, uh, I already made the uh, electronic structure for all the four choices. Carbon have six electrons, so it will be two and four. Oxygen gains two electrons, so the total will be ten electrons, two and eight. Uh, here we have also fluoride ions, so it has one more electron, and instead of nine, it will be ten. So the electronic distribution will be two, eight. Sodium atom, two, eight, one, eleven electrons. For uh, potassium, it's a positive ion, so it loses one electron. And instead of 19, it will be 18, 288. And this sulfide ion, instead of 16, it will be 18 because it gains two electrons. So this structure will be also 288. Magnesium atom, 12 electrons, 282. And the sodium positive ion, instead of 11, it will be only 10, 28. As we can see from the electronic uh, configuration or the electronic structure, uh, potassium ion and sulfide ion has the same electronic structure, so the answer will be C. Question 5. Which statement about the isotope of the same element are correct? 1. They are atoms which have the same chemical properties because they have the same number of electrons in the outer shell. Isotope, of course, have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons, so they will have the same number of electrons in the outer shell. Statement 1 is correct. They are atoms having the same number of electrons and neutrons, but different protons. This is a wrong statement, because the number of neutrons is different, not the protons. Statement 3. They are atoms which have the same number of electrons and protons, but different neutrons, and this is a correct statement. So we have two statements, 1 and 3 are correct, and the answer is B. Question 6. What is the total number of shared electrons in a molecule of methanol? So here I draw the methanol molecule and we will count how many shared electrons. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we have 10 shared electrons and the answer is D. Question 7. Which row about the structure and uses of diamond and graphite is correct? Here, the answer is C. Graphite has a giant covalent structure and it is used as duplicant. Uh, all the other statements are wrong because here the statement A, diamond used to make electrodes, this is wrong. Diamond has a simple covalent, this is also wrong. And graphite has a simple covalent structure, this is also wrong. The only correct statement is C. Question 8. Caffeine is a stimulant found in coffee. And here we have the structure of caffeine. Which formula represent caffeine? Here we have four molecular formula. To know the molecular formula, we have to write each type of atoms. 
here we have carbon nitrogen hydrogen and oxygen and we will count how many atoms present in the formula how many carbon atoms then how many hydrogen and nitrogen and oxygen the formula will be c the equation for the reaction between hydrogen sulfide and oxygen is shown as we can see hydrogen sulfide reacts with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide and water which mass of oxygen is required to react with 5.0 gram hydrogen sulfide so we'll first calculate the number of moles of hydrogen sulfide using the 5.1 grams and i will divide it by the mr of hydrogen sulfide which will be 34 so 5.1 divide 34 the number of moles of hydrogen sulfide will be 0 0.15 then we will go to the ratio using the ratio between hydrogen sulfide and oxygen as we can see the ratio is 2 to 3 so we will use this ratio to calculate the number of moles of oxygen which will be 0 0.15 multiplied by 3 divide 2 and the number of moles of oxygen will be 0 0.225 okay from the number of oxygen we will calculate the mass of oxygen required using the number of moles number of moles equal to the mass divide the mr so we can easily get the mass of oxygen because the, the mr is 32 so the mass will be 7.2 grams we will go back here to the answer the answer will be c 7.2 grams of oxygen is required Question 9, question 10, sorry. Which apparatus is used to plate a nickel object with silver? So, nickel object is the object to be plated and we will go and plate it with uh, silver. Number A, we have the, uh, the object to be plated at the cathode and the silver at the anode. This is correct. And the electrolyte is made from the metal that we're going to blade with which is silver we have silver nitrate solution so we have aqueous solution of the metal that we want to blade with so a is a correct answer b is wrong because we have silver at the cathode and this is wrong the object to be plated should be placed at the cathode also here d is wrong for the same reason we cannot place the uh, silver on the cathode nickel object should be placed at the cathode uh, also the diagram C is wrong because we have the electrolyte is a nickel nitrate solution. The electrolyte should be an aqueous solution for the metal that we should blade with, which is silver. So also C is wrong and the answer will be A. Question 11. When an acid is added to an alkali, the temperature of the reaction mixture is rises. We have a reaction between acid and alkali, and this is a neutralization reaction. The reaction mixture, uh, the temperature of the reaction mixture increases. That means the reaction is exothermic. So the answer will be D. It's a neutralization reaction and it is exothermic. Question 12. Some properties of fuel for fuel are shown here. Which fuel is a gas at room temperature and makes two products when it burns? in a plentiful supply of air or oxygen so here we have the four fuels only hydrogen and methane are gases octane and wax are not gases but hydrogen when burns gives only one product which is water so the answer will be methane methane when burns gives two products which are carbon dioxide and water and it's a gas at room temperature Question 13. Nitrogen tetroxide is converted into nitrogen dioxide in a reversible reaction, and the forward reaction is endothermic. Which condition gives the highest equilibrium yield of nitrogen dioxide? Because the forward reaction is endothermic, the endothermic reaction is favored by high temperature, so the condition required should be the high temperature, and uh, the, the, it will give the highest yield of dinitrogen of nitrogen dioxide. Uh, for the pressure, as we can see, we have one molecule on the left side and two molecules on the right side. So, if we decrease the pressure, the reaction, the equilibrium 
will be shifted toward the right side toward formation of more nitrogen dioxide so we're going to choose high temperature and low pressure the answer will be a question 14 dilute hydrochloric acid is reacted with excess calcium carbonate and the total volume of the gas measured at regular intervals the result can be shown on the graph which is w and the experiment is repeated again only with one change and the results of the second experiment are shown by x so we have two graphs the w is for the first experiment and x is for the second experiment after we made the change as we can see w is a steeper than x so w has a higher rate of reaction uh, the two graphs end at the same volume of carbon dioxide gas so we are using the same uh, volume and concentration of the acid and the same mass of calcium carbonate but because x has a lower gradient uh, of course the re rate of reaction in x is slower that means the change that we made decreases the rate of reaction so now we're going to have four choices we're going to decrease which we're going to um, choose which change decreases the rate of reaction so the first one adding catalyst of course wrong catalyst increase the rate of reaction the calcium carbonate is broken into smaller pieces Broken into smaller pieces means increasing the surface area, and this will increase the rate of reaction. The concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid increased. Of course, this is also will increase the rate of reaction. So uh, the last choice, the temperature of the dilute hydrochloric acid decreases. Decreasing the temperature means the particle uh, will move slower, so we will have less frequent collision, decreasing the rate of reaction. So the answer will be D. Question 15. When hydrated copper sulfate is heated, the hydrated copper sulfate has blue color. It produces white copper sulfate, which is the anhydrous. And when the water is added, the white copper sulfate again turns into blue hydrated copper sulfate. Which type of reaction is shown by this observation? Of course, the reaction is reversible we can, because we can return the original uh, cup, anhydrous copper sulfate again and then by add water uh, it uh, convert into the hydrated copper sulfate the answer is d question 16 when magnesium is heated with zinc oxide the reaction as shown in the equation here heating magnesium with zinc oxide and he's asking which substance is oxidized obviously magnesium gains oxygen so magnesium is oxidized and the answer is a 17. The equation for the reaction between ethane and hydrogen is shown. And we have the bond energies. We want to calculate the overall energy change during the reaction. To calculate the overall energy change, we need first to calculate the energy absorbed to break the bond and the energy released when new bonds are formed. First here in ethane, we have one carbon double bond carbon which is 612 four carbon hydrogen bonds 416 multiplied by four and here one hydrogen hydrogen bond in the hydrogen gas 436 so the total energy absorbed is 2712 and for the energy released we have one carbon single bond carbon which is 348 and six carbon hydrogen bonds so for uh, 416 multiplied by six the total energy absorbed the total energy released sorry will be 2844 to calculate the energy change it will be the energy absorbed minus the energy released 2712 minus 2844 uh, it will be minus 132 kilojoule per mole and the answer will be B. Question 18. Ethanoic acid react with water to produce an acidic solution. Which row describe the role, role of ethanoic acid and water in this reaction? Of course, ethanoic acid 
react as an acid so it's a proton donor and water will accept this proton so the answer will be c ethanoic acid donates the proton and this uh, proton is accepted by water question 19 tests are done on aqueous solutions the test is adding few drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide and we will have white precipitate and then we will add excess sodium hydroxide, the precipitate dissolve and give colorless solution. Which cation produces this observation? We have aluminium, calcium, and zinc. We know that aluminium and zinc are both amphoteric, so the hydroxide formed, the white precipitate here, is aluminium hydroxide or zinc hydroxide. It because they are amphoteric hydroxide, they will dissolve in the excess sodium hydroxide so they, get, they will give the same results with excess sodium hydroxide and both cations can give the same uh, observation so the answer will be b one and three are correct question 20 ammonia dissolves in water to form dilute solution of ammonium hydroxide the reaction is reversible exists as an equilibrium mixture which statement about the mixture is correct all the ammonia and water molecules have turned into ions. This is, of course, wrong. The reaction is reversible, as we can see. Ammonia and water molecule have stopped changing into ions. This is, of course, wrong. The concentration of ammonia molecules and ammonium ions are always equal. This is wrong. This is not what happened at equilibrium. At equilibrium, the rate of formation of ammonia molecule is equal to the rate of formation of ammonium ions. So the only correct statement is D. Question 21. Elements E and F are in group 1 in the periodic table. E has a higher melting point than F. So let's revise the trend of group 1. As we go down the group, the melting point decreases. So when E has a higher melting point than F, so E is uh, above F in group 1. Element J and element L are in group 7 in the periodic table. And J has a higher density than L. Revising again group 7, as we go down the group, the density increases. So when J has a higher density than L, J should be below L in group 7. The question is, which element have the highest atomic number in each group? We know that we, as we go down any group in the periodic table, the atomic number increases. So to get the highest atomic number, we should have F and J. So the answer will be C. Question uh, 22. Which metal forms an ion with only one oxidation state? We know that all the transition metals have more than one oxidation state. So here we have three transition metals, chromium, copper, iron. The only metal that can have one oxidation state is aluminium. So the answer is A. Question 23. How does the nature of the oxide change across the period 3 from sodium to chlorine? Here we have period 3 starting from sodium, magnesium, then aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, uh, sulfur, and chlorine. First, we have sodium and magnesium. They are metals, so they have basic oxide. Then aluminium. We know that aluminium is amphoteric, so the uh, uh, aluminium will have amphoteric oxide. Then all of the rest are non-metals so they will form acidic oxide the nature of the oxide changes starting from basic then amphoteric and finally acidic so the answer will be a question 24 zinc is a metal with a boiling point of 907 these two methods are making uh, zinc or extracting zinc from its ore by forming zinc oxide then we have two methods, method 1 and method 2. Method 1, heating zinc oxide with carbon at 1000 degrees Celsius to obtain the zinc. And method 2, we will dissolve zinc oxide in dilute sulfuric acid. So we will have zinc sulfate solution. We will make electrolysis for zinc sulfate at 35 degrees Celsius to obtain zinc. Which statement is correct? Statement 1. Carbon oxidized zinc oxide in method 1. As we can see here, 
zinc oxide changed into zinc so it loses oxygen of course zinc oxide is reduced not oxidized so statement a is wrong statement b zinc vapor zinc vapor is produced in both methods so here we will go back to the boiling point of zinc 907 heating in the first method to 1000 produces of course zinc vapor because 1000 is above the melting point of zinc but in the second method we will heat only to 35 degrees celsius which is very low temperature comparing to the boiling point of zinc that means zinc vapor will not be produced in the second method it will be only produced in the first method so again statement two is also wrong c zinc is produced at the anode in the method two here we have electrolysis for zinc sulfate solution we know that zinc is metal it form it will form positive ion so it will be attracted to the cathode not the anode so also statement c is wrong uh, d zinc compounds are reduced in both methods in the first method zinc oxide is reduced by carbon to form zinc and carbon dioxide in the second method zinc ions gain two electrons to form zinc metal gaining electron is reduction so statement d is correct zinc compound are reduced in both methods and the answer is d uh, question 25 which statement about the reaction of metals is correct iron and carbon dioxide are produced when iron 3 oxide is heated with carbon this is correct because carbon reduces iron 3 oxide into iron and carbon dioxide produced so a is a correct statement b c and d are a wrong statement because here we have magnesium react with dilute hydrochloric acid no chlorine produced uh, potassium react vigorously with water to produce hydrogen and acidic solution acidic is wrong it's an alkaline solution zinc react with dilute sulfuric acid producing sulfur oxide of course this is wrong it will produce uh, zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas so uh, only state the first statement is correct and the answer will be a question 26 12.4 grams of copper carbonate is heated in a test tube only 50 percent is decomposed that means only half of this mass will be decomposed 12.4 divide 2 will be 6.2 grams so we will have only 6.2 grams of the copper carbonate decomposes so we will calculate the number of moles of copper carbonate dividing the mass by the mr of copper carbonate 6.2 divided by 124 it will be the number of moles of copper carbonate will be 0 0.05 then from the ratio the ratio here is one to one so the number of uh, moles of copper oxide equal to that of copper carbonate it will be also 0 0.05 we will use this number of moles to calculate the mass of copper oxide produced so the mass will be number of moles multiplied by the mr of copper oxide which is 80 so the mass of copper oxide will be 4 grams the question is what will be the final mass of the substances in the test tube finally in the test tube we will have 4 grams of copper oxide and we will also have 6.2 grams remaining undecomposed 50% undecomposed of the copper carbonate so the total mass will be remaining is 6.2 plus 4 it will be 10.2 grams and the answer will be C question 27 which statement about the manufacture of ammonia is correct ammonia is manufactured by heating hydrogen and nitrogen at 50 degrees celsius and one atmospheric pressure we know that ammonia is manufactured by happer process using hydrogen and nitrogen so the temperature will be 400 degree 450 degrees celsius so this statement is wrong ammonia is obtained by heating hydrogen and nitrogen in contact process is this of course wrong we have happer process hydrogen for the manufacture of ammonia is extracted from air this is of course wrong and the reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen to form ammonia is a reversible reaction this is the only correct statement the answer is d 
the diagram question 28 the diagram shows a stage of purification of dirty water as we can see the dirty water will pass through three stages first sand fine gravel then coarse gravel then the water will be collected from these holes this process that we can uh, see in the diagram is of course filtration of water passes through the uh, solid sand fine gravel and coarse gravel so the answer will be d filtration question 29 which substance is uh, present in the polluted air that damage stonework and it will kill trees what damages stonework and kill trees is the acid rain so here we have sulfur dioxide which dissolve in the rain to give acid and this acid can react with stonework because it is made from calcium carbonate and it will damage the soil making the soil acidic and this will kill trees so the answer will be d sulfur dioxide question three petrol fuel cars produces oxides of nitrogen which statement explains how oxides of nitrogen are formed in a catalytic converter the element of nitrogen and oxygen combines, of course, not in the catalytic converter. Oxygen and nitrogen compound in petrol combined in the car engine, not nitrogen compound in petrol, nitrogen from air. So statement B is also wrong. The high temperature in the engine provide oxygen and nitrogen, the activation energy needed to react. This is the correct statement. Uh, so C is correct. The answer will be C. 31. The scheme shows four stages in the conversion of sulfur to sulfuric acid, in which stage, in which stage uh, the catalyst is used. This is uh, the uh, how can we convert sulfur dioxide into sulfur trioxide, where the reaction is reversible. This is the stage in which we will use the catalyst, so the answer will be B. Question 32. Which element has an oxide that is used as a food preservative? Sulfur dioxide is used as a food preservative, so the answer will be D. Question 33. Which substance give off carbon dioxide on heating? We have limestone, which is calcium carbonate. By heating, calcium carbonate will be decomposed into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So it will carbon dioxide will be given off by heating limestone. The answer is B. Question 34. Which formula represent ethyl butanoate? Ethyl, this is the part that comes from alcohol. The word ethyl means it is made from two carbons. Butanoate is the part that comes from the acid. Butanoic acid, that means it is made from four carbon. So we will uh, choose the structure that has two carbon atoms in the alcohol part and four carbon atoms in the acid part so here the answer will be a the acid part is one two three four highlighted with yellow and the alcohol part is one two carbons highlighted with pink then question 35 methanol is a member of homologous series of alcohol what is the formula of the alcohol in the same series which you contain three carbon atoms so we will use the general formula of alcohol to calculate the formula of the alcohol having three carbon atoms the general formula is cn h2n plus one oh so if n is three number of carbon atoms will be three number of hydrogen will be six plus one is seven so we will have c3 h7 oh the answer will be c question 36 which type of compounds react with hydrogen in an addition reaction addition reaction means we will have unsaturated compound so of course it will be alkenes the answer is b then we will go to question 37 the equation for the reaction between methane and chlorine is shown methane reacts with chlorine to form carbon tetrachloride and hydrogen chloride which type of reaction does methane undergo Methane, of course, is one of the alkane members, so alkane can make only substitution reaction where the four uh, hydrogen atoms in the methane is substituted with chlorine atom to form carbon tetrachloride. So the answer is a substitution reaction.
Then question 38, which function group form an amide linkage? The amide linkage, as we know, form it between carboxylic group and amine group. So the answer will be A. This is the amide linkage. Then question 39, the structure of propene is shown. Which diagram represent the polypropene? To make a polymer from the propene, we will remove this double bond, then writing the two carbons, the first one having two hydrogens, so uh, we will draw two hydrogen here, then the second carbon having one hydrogen and one CH3 group. Then we will make two open end for the two carbons, drawing the brackets and N for the polymer. So here we have four choices. We will choose which one represented or is the same as the polymer we drawn. It's B. The first carbon has two hydrogen. The second one has one CH3 and one hydrogen. The correct answer will be B. Here, of course, C and D are wrong because we didn't break the double bond. So C and D are wrong. And of course, A is wrong because it have completely different structure. Question 40. The equation shows the formation of a polymer called Kevlar. The two monomers, the first one having two carboxylic group, one from each side, and the second monomer having a minor group, one from each side. They uh, join together by removing one molecule of water. So uh, it is a condensation polymerization. We're removing one molecule of water, joining the carboxylic group and amino group to form amide linkage. So this one is boly amide and the polymerization by removing one molecule of water is condensation polymerization so here we have box the uh, how the polymer is formed and the type of the polymer it's a condensation polymerization and the type of the polymer is polyamide so the answer will be c here we come to the end of our exam like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive the, uh, all the updates Comment down below if you have any question. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.